Howdy banger pals, Blaine Smith joining you for another Overkill Reviews. I'm sorry, my face is cleanly shaved. It was for a Halloween costume. I look like a weird boy. I don't like it. I'm actively growing it back right now. Don't worry. Oh, damn. Uh, anyways, here's that record you wanted me to talk about last week. <laughs> Yes, it's Dark Thrones Astral Fortress. It came out October 28th on Peaceful Record. We're talking about it this week because Dark Throne only sends out promo a day before their album comes out because they're weird and wacky, and that segues nicely into a bio. Uh, the bio for Dark Throne is, they don't need a bio. You know who Dark Throne is. Uh, standard bearer for Norwegian black metal because we don't talk about that other guy uh and just general fun wacky dudes fenris and nocturnal culto have spawned memes they've made amazing albums they've transformed as a band they haven't stayed in one rut fenris hates to play live it's a very strange unique band uh that we all love deeply in our hearts and has given us so much joy so let's find out how much joy we're getting from this new album So Dark Throne has taken us a lot of places over the years, whether it's to a graveyard, the Norwegian wilderness, a crusty punk squat. But this time they are taking us underwater. Uh, and it's great. Uh, I love the song for two reasons. One more superficial is the title, The Sea Beneath the Seas of the Sea. Reminds me of this Brad Neely clip. Sometimes I go to the lake and sing songs to the lake about the lake. To talk about the actual music, though, the song absolutely sounds under the sea. Under the sea. They've nailed the under the sea vibe. Under the sea. It's got some great keys that help give it that floaty ocean sound, and it's providing the impression of a 70s rock band passed through a dark throne filter. And it stands as, I guess, the flagship or... I might say flag submarine track of the album because it comes smack dab in the middle and it sits at a 10 minute runtime longer than any other track on the album but it absolutely justifies the whole thing uh, because it has a great crescendo build up to the end with the aforementioned weird keys bubbling along to a great catchy modern dark throne track uh, there's specific moments of great guitar and great drum action where they really steal your attention throughout the song and it all sounds just absolutely magnificent uh i could go on about it but let's just take a quick minute quick minute quick minute to enjoy floaty ocean dark throne <laughs> So the big album set piece is in the depths, but that doesn't mean that's the only place we're going. Aeon 2, the album closer sequel to Aeon on Soul Side Journey, gives us another fantastic set piece. Uh, does this through majestic, almost grand, bordering on power metal, heavy metal riffing, uh, leading into a floaty Bowies in space interlude. Uh, so yeah, I guess we went from the ocean to the expanse of space. Uh, and it's weird how noticeably different those two things can sound, even though they do border on each other sound-wise. It's fun to kind of compare and contrast. I don't know if this was meant to be a spacey track, but having an ocean-sounding track and a spacey-sounding track on an album is pretty fun and cool, and I like it. And even the kind of jangly, ambient lead-in interlude, Colbotten West of the Vast Forests. They mention forests, but when combined with the song, it also winds up sounding spacey. Um, it might actually be my 
favorite track on the album. Um, it, it presents a really great range. Uh, like I said, the guitars sound so full and majestic at one point, and uh, it, it really closes the album out so, so, so strong and loops very well back into the start of the album again because you're probably going to be listening to this album a couple of times through. So the C, I'm going to shorten it for time's sake, and Eon are both songs that I could get an entire album in the style of. They take me to a really unique place, but then I'm carted off before I can really fully enjoy them. It's like I'm on some kind of weird guided tour, and I'm trying to look at the Ocean Museum, but the bus is leaving, and I'm going to be lost in a foreign country, and I don't know, man, I don't want to do that. I want to stay at the Ocean Museum. Uh, it's not that anything on the album is bad. We're still in the heavy, doom, dark throne period that they started a few albums back that they're making some great music with it's just that the surprises on the album were so surprising and fun that they kind of diminished the other tracks around them by being so great and cool uh, a track like Kevorkian Times just falls between these two really fantastic songs and winds up being a little forgettable and after listening to it a couple times I can stop paying attention for that brief period because I'm kind of just waiting for the stuff that I'm really excited about to come around uh, there's just two slash three really powerful tracks on the album that are all worthy of an album in and of themselves. It's not to say there's only two stops on the tour that I like, though. Stalagmite Necklace also features some additional synth funkiness that I can really project a feeling of forest exploration onto. Uh, there is a lot of experimentation on this album, and it's very rare that Dark Throne experiments and has it fall flat, and these three tracks are where the experimentation happened, and these three tracks are all resounding successes, like I said. Uh, it's a Great move to hold it back, though. I'm not saying I want wall-to-wall -wall synths here. It's 15 minutes before any of the true wackiness pops up, and it's a good way to lull you into a false sense of thinking you know where the album's going and then get these cool surprises. And sometimes using an esoteric instrument like a Mellotron can feel like a bit of a crutch. It can feel like the hook itself. But with Dark Throne, it's only ever supplementary to what they are doing uh, with the guitars and the drums. Uh, the guitar work here, especially... Uh, is able to really steal back the attention that the Mellotron gave you with its unique sound. Uh, the guitars close things out really full and big, and then the track leads into the sea, which dunks us back down at the start. So it's a fun little roller coaster ride. And let's hear a little bit of that Mellotron and guitar action going on. <laughs> old English proverb is children should be seen but never heard. And that's basically uh, how to describe a good producer. Uh, the music here couldn't be more perfectly captured. Uh, the album feels like it has a very particular size and space, and there's times when the music totally fills that space, and then there's times where it retracts, and you can be picking out little things you like and feeling like there's a specific place that that's occurring, and every time you listen to it, you can kind of imagine it in that same physical space. It's, a, it's an immersive experience. It's virtual reality man and I'm not talking about some metaverse virtual reality here no 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 one looks like me's everybody's got legs uh, this is absolutely a gold standard type of album for how things should sound once they get into your hand very organic very real sounding album and it's the closest we're gonna get to seeing Dark Throne perform it live so it better sound like that oh, play live So it's conclusion time, but before I conclude, let me remind you that, hey, we have a 
Patreon campaign. A big thanks. We've got a bunch of great supporters uh, already on there. If you're watching and supporting, thank you so much. And if you're not supporting yet, uh, head on over there. Toss us some bucks. It helps us make this content. We put stuff up on there. Hey, today we'll be going up the tip sheet. Uh, we do an extra little bonus tip sheet. I record a little video. Other banger members contribute. And we just, you know, list some more records you want. And if, from what I can see and what you say to me, you just want us to tell you more records that are cool. So good way to hear about more records that are cool. So Dark Throne continues to be a band that does whatever they want, whenever they want. And it always turns out fine. I mean, the biggest issue I have with this album is that Impeccable Caverns of Satan and Kevorkian Times can't live up to the standard that not even the band sets for themselves. The other tracks on the album set for those tracks uh and that's not exactly a damning mistake uh, if you're already enjoying the doom throne period then you have another album to add to the already impressive stable of releases uh with a bunch of exciting new ideas my seriously my only complaint is the exciting new ideas were so exciting and new and fun that i just wish they went further with them and gave us a bit more so i mean minor complaint pretty easy four out of five skulls in the deep blue sea under the sea but hey that brings us to shout outs time as always i mentioned more records i have more records for you here's four records came out last week and today uh so last week we had the release of atagar's tyrannomore i don't know i think on eisenwald uh it's some swiss black metal uh it's stuff i really like it's a really cool record can't say the name but i can listen to it and enjoy it uh you also had implore release the burden of existence uh it's a german style blend type of band uh they got a bunch of stuff going on and if you're a fan of the crusty dark throne period it doesn't sound like that but there is some crust influences and some grindcore influences in with some extreme metal influences so there's a chance you might like it and there's a chance i'll stop saying influences uh, after i've said it so many times already uh we also had death siege released throne of heresy on everlasting spew records i uh, had some israeli black and death and if you're wanting a little bit more chaos going on in your music there you go and to close things out with a kind of weird ambient mysterious black metal project from here in canada uh this week Vare released giants of murk it's an independent release so uh you know uh i don't know anything about the person that made this i don't know anything about it besides i like the way it sounds it's nice it's kind of relaxing wash over you black metal so please absolutely check that out and let me know what you thought of the new Dark Throne record. This time you've heard it, you've listened to it. Get down in the comments. What did you think? How did you feel? How are you feeling about this Dark Throne period? And what other records are you excited about? Just chat with me. Like, the, subscribe. I'll be down there with you. I'll see you soon. Bye.